What is the creepiest thing you've seen in the woods or anywhere else? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I once worked as a housing inspector. A new client had purchased a house and I was tasked to go and inspect it. From the information on hand, the house was a very old home, built 1908, and was quite the derelict. I was in no hurry to inspect the house in my honest opinion, so scheduled it for my last stop of the day. I did my jobs as per normal and then made my way to the house. I parked my car on the road, and as I walked up the path, nothing extraordinary jumped out at me. It was a run-down three-story house. For me, it was just your run-of-the-mill wreck. I guess the buyers had walked through and seen some potential in the home, but I could see none. It was getting on to dusk, and as I didn't have the key for the front door, I made my way around to the rear of the property to access the rear door. As I came around the back of the house, I noticed that the back door itself opened up into a large kitchen. What caught me at that point in time was, as the sun began to set behind me, I could feel a drastic change of air temperature. It was late summer and I assumed this was the reason for the drop in temp. I turned to look at the sunset, noting that the cloud cover gave the sky a nice crimson hue. I turned back towards the door and that's when I saw it. On the other side of the kitchen was a door that lead into a hallway which in turn lead to the front door. The front door had colored glass. But what was standing in the darkness of the hallway, to this day, still makes the hair of my neck stand up. There was a silhouette of man. Judging from the build, I could tell it was a man. There was no distinguishable features to see, just a black silhouette. What happened next froze me to the spot. Where his face was, two eyes opened, and they were the color red. Unblinking and unmoving, those eyes glowed red and I could tell they were looking right at me. At first, I couldn't look away. Those red orbs seemed to stare straight into my soul and I found myself transfixed staring back. Every fiber in me told me I should run, but I could not move. I stared unblinking at the red eyes and they in turn stared unblinking back at me. My eyes began to water and I blinked to clear them, but as I opened my eyes again, the silhouette was gone. I freaked, I quickly ran around the house, jumped in my car and sped home. What would normally take me 25 minutes to drive home, only took me 10 as I couldn't get away fast enough. In my report, I wrote that the house and some structural issues that could not be remedied and the house was eventually torn down. In its place is a now a housing unit with six three-bedroom homes. I have heard stories from tradesmen who have been on site at night and all have said that they felt a cold chill every time they go there. I did look up the history of the property, but nothing unusual jumped out at me. Up to that point in my life, I never believed in the supernatural or the paranormal. Even now I am skeptical of most things, but I know what I saw was pure evil and I have never had an encounter like it since. When I was cleaning houses, I was cleaning this all brick, ranch style house. Everything was going fine until I went to enter the bedroom. There were lights on in the hallways, but not in there. I turned the corner and I saw some huge red and black beast monster thing staring at me, on the opposite side of the room in front of this big mirror. Bigger than the mirror somehow. Though the mirror was almost from floor to ceiling. Distorted, I guess. And I felt the most awful dreadful cold feeling. I was simultaneously turning the light on as I entered the room. So this vision lasted maybe all of a second or two. Then the light was on, and I was just standing there, staring, dumbfounded, mouth open, fear tears. Then I gathered my things and I left immediately. I have no idea if I was just overtired or what, but I have always remembered that beast image, like a snapshot. Perhaps my subconscious detected something dangerous and could only scream at the conscious by transferring scary orc-like images, or something. My mom doesn't like driving on the highway, so when I was a teenager, we'd take the back way when visiting my grandparents. There was one town we'd always pass through that gave us the creeps. It was very small, no grocery store, no gas station, just some houses, a church, and a community center that was weirdly nowhere near the rest of the town. A lot of main roads went near it, but not through it, it was the kind of place that most people didn't pass though. We never saw anyone on the street, occasionally you'd see a shadowy figure peeking out from a porch but that was it. There was a huge park with a nice looking playground that we never saw a single child at. If vampires were real, this is definitely where they'd live. Once me and my mom decided to drive down a side street in this town just to see what was there. We came across a car repair shop which was weird, because we never saw any cars there, and as soon as we approached, this guy came out. His face was not the shape of a normal human face, it was kind of lumpy. 
Obviously some people have facial deformities, nothing scary about that, but there was something so unsettling about this guy. He stormed out and then just stopped, and stared at us with the angriest look I've ever seen. It didn't help that this was the only human we'd ever seen outside in a town we'd driven through dozens of times. We quickly noped out of there and never explored that side street again. My girlfriend, a couple friends and I visited this abandoned old amphitheater in upstate New York, near a mostly empty old mining town. It was supposedly haunted after like five murders happened there in the 50s. People had told us that if we wanted a real experience that we should go there, so we did. It was a cold night in the fall and it took us forever to find it in a while to even find our way inside. We had flashlights and those disposable 35mm cameras. We heard crazy stuff, and in one room, chairs literally slid across a floor. But the super messed part was when my buddy's girlfriend screamed, said something grabbed her. She was absolutely inconsolable, so we bounced. In the car, she insisted, we look at the back of her arm and it was a bite mark. Not some little thing guys, like upper and lower teeth, red and bruised. It looked like a small game trap had closed on her arm. We took probably 100 pictures in there and the guy at the Walmart development place said none of the rolls came out, like they had been exposed to light. That night changed how I feel about that stuff. I lived in a haunted apartment for a bit, my roommates and I had all seen the same woman in our one-room apartment. Sometimes, the lights would turn off by themselves. We all felt sick being in the apartment alone. The first night we were there, I sat down on my bed and I blinked, and saw clear as day a dead woman on the floor by the bathroom door. And then blinked again, and she was gone. The vibes in there were not good, but I still said goodbye to the ghost when I left. My friend and I were camping in November, when the busy camping season had already ended here. We were at a rustic campground that had maybe five sites in a little loop, way off from any main road and away from any town or residential area. We were the only ones there, there was no sign of anybody else. I know the area pretty well and didn't have any qualms about it. We got set up, had some dinner, but I was feeling awful for some reason. Just anxious and tired and unable to eat much. It was eerily quiet, no wind or usual night sounds except a fox in the distance. So quiet it hurt my ears. My friend and I went to bed in my little two-man tent, set up in the trees a ways from my car and the path. Way off in the distance we heard an engine, and it sounded like it was getting closer and closer, and then it was idling at the entrance to the campground loop. Sounded like an ATV, and the DNR here only used trucks at campgrounds. We were both frozen and silent, we could see the lights from the ATV through the tent wall. Then it came closer, went around the loop, shined its lights at us for a second, and left. We relaxed a little. Then we heard them approaching again, this time there was more than one ATV. They idled at the entrance for a long time, and then drove through again, shined lights at us, and then left. We basically slept in shifts all night because we were scared to get out of the tent to pack up and leave. We called off the rest of the trip and went home the next morning. I used to live alone for almost 20 years in an old farmhouse that was built in 1900. I was the third person to own the house. I knew it was haunted and I would see a dark thing move about the house. I could tell it was a male. I figured it was the original owner who built the house as the second owner was still alive. The ghost wasn't scary or anything, but you knew he was always there. I kinda made a deal with him and told him he could stay in the den and the rest of the house was mine. This arrangement worked for almost 20 years, until I got remarried. My new husband never believed it was haunted and always made up an excuse for all the strange occurrences in the house. One day, my husband was in the bathroom getting dressed and he was mad at me and yelling about something. When he started to leave the bathroom, still yelling, the bathroom door slammed hard in his face and the house kinda shook. He came into the living room with absolutely no color in his face and was really kinda shook up. We've since sold the house, but my husband still talks about what happened and now believes in ghost. So, before I get into this, I need to throw a disclaimer out there that I was 18 years old when this event took place. I have never done hard drugs in my life, I don't drink alcohol, and I started smoking weed when I was 22. Also, there were three other teenagers with me that night who were also sober and witnessed this as well. So, my friend and I were hanging out with two of her guy friends Friday night after school, and the plans were that we were having a sleepover at my friend's house. We were just hanging out around town, nothing much to do in a small Georgia town, but walk around the town square and go to the trails. Well, after shooting the shit for a couple of hours, we got hungry and ordered a pizza for pickup. 
We got the pizza and drove to a pretty quiet neighborhood where one of the guys lived. The neighborhood was kinda tucked away into a forest, so it was really quiet and really dark in that area of town. As we were sitting there outside, eating pizza, using the hood of the car as a makeshift table, I looked up and saw what looked like a large, pitch black mass that resembled a primate in shape and movement, swinging high in the trees that had to be a good 800 feet away from us. Even from that distance, in the night, it looked so huge. But that made no sense as we live in a small town in Georgia, there are no large primates here. I alerted everyone to this figure in the trees, and we were all baffled and amazed at what we were seeing. I remember just having this sense of dread washing over me as I looked at this figure, trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. Then, it seemed like it noticed us. We couldn't see any distinct features, and the figure was pitch black, but somehow, you just knew that it was watching you. Suddenly, this shadow, ape-like figure stood tall, and you could almost see it shifting before your eyes, as it began to resemble more closely the shape of a large man, holding onto a branch with one arm, just staring at us with unseen eyes. Everyone was frozen, so still, and so quiet. It seemed like the sounds of the night froze in place with us. We were just transfixed on this dark figure in the trees. Then, this creature crouched over, and as it did, its shoulders seemed to stretch impossibly higher, reaching over its head. All of us were in shock and terrified at seeing this, maybe a little in denial as what we were seeing was defying any logical explanation. Because you want this to make sense. And then this creature's shoulders, for lack of a better word or better way to explain this, seemed to just grow into these huge wings, then this dark figure jumped off the branch and flew off. I knew what I was seeing was real because when that happened, we all ran to the car without talking, just screaming, as fast as possible, and sped away from there. We were all freaking out, trying to find any logical reason that could explain what we had just witnessed, but there was none. Needless to say, no one slept that night. We were all too terrified that maybe that thing follow us back to my friend's house. I was in protective custody or PC while incarcerated. The reason I was in a PC pod was because I was extradited out of state and got into a couple fights being a Southsider in the northern states. Being in PC means you're locked down for 23 hours a day and get one hour of day room time. One day, I get my hour pretty late around 9pm or 10pm around this hour most of the inmates are asleep, so it's quiet. I have the hour to myself since I have no celly. I'm walking around doing laps around the day room to get my steps in. Sometimes, I look over at the cells. One the times I look over, I seen someone looking out of two houses cell window. I think to myself, two houses empty, nobody is housed in there. Without breaking eye contact, I walk over to two house. I could see their face and whoever it is I'm looking at moves their head away from the window. I look into two house and it's an empty cell. I was in St. Louis on a work trip. I was staying at some creepy hotel that gave me real shining vibes. It was really creepy, I felt uncomfortable in my room. I've had episodes of sleep paralysis since I was a kid, but they never bothered me until it happened in that hotel. I woke up at about 3 AM, I remember clearly seeing that on the alarm clock. I was on my stomach with my arms at my side facing the clock radio in the door. I could see the hallway light coming in from under the door. I had this feeling like something was sitting on the small of my back. I couldn't move, but even if I could, I was too scared to try and look. My cell phone was on the bed in front of me, and I thought, everything would be fine if I just called my mom. I couldn't move to get the phone. After a few minutes, I felt this cold pressure push into my lower back and shoot up towards my head and down towards my feet. I was able to move after that. I was there for a few more days and was so glad to get out of that hotel. I saw a living ghost or whatever the hell this phenomenon is called once when I was a kid too. My dad was on the road for work for long stretches at a time. And when I was little, I didn't keep up with his schedule, so it was pretty normal to wake up in the morning and him be asleep in my parents' room after he got in in the middle of the night or something. I was creeping around one morning because I heard my mom downstairs and thought it was a chance to go look around in her room, where I wasn't supposed to be alone. I walked in, their bed was to the left and bathroom to the right, and turned right toward the bathroom. Then I heard my dad call out from the bed behind me. I was always really excited to see him, so I whipped around, and sure enough, there he was smiling at me from under the covers. I ran and jumped in the bed to hug him, and suddenly, there was no one in bed. I'll never forget how clearly I heard and saw him and how flabbergasted I was when suddenly he just wasn't actually there. Turns out he was still on the road and didn't come home for at least several more days. I've told a lot of people this story and I don't think many have believed me, 
but it's such a clear memory. I'm a huge skeptic when it comes to anything paranormal too, so all these years later I have absolutely no clue what to make of it. 2010 Woods of Arkansas, still to this day my friends and I get chills talking about it. About five or six of us were smoking in the back of my buddy's F-150 and pulled into a random spot off of some back woods in Ozark, Arkansas. I'm talking population of like 1,500 people. I just recently moved there from a big city and didn't know much about animals at that age 16 years old. About 15 minutes of us being in these random woods, I saw a set of eyes staring at us. Not knowing much, I just thought it was an animal or something in the woods. Like an owl, because it was about 10 or 12 feet in the air, but it didn't blink, getting goosebumps writing this. After looking at it for about a good 30 seconds or so of this thing not blinking, and me slowly focusing on it I noticed it didn't have pupils either. Still, not freaking out yet, I point through the stone laughs and conversation at the thing looking at us. I'm laughing too like, what is that? They have all lived there for a long or all their lives, so I figured one of them would know. Dead silence, nothing, I mean there is not a single sound. No lights are on, so it is pitch black out there, just lighters being a light. These eyes were glowing yellow and not moving, not blinking. A good 10 seconds go by, which felt like 10 minutes. I swear on my life this thing went from being maybe 50 to 60 feet away to 15 feet away behind a tree in less than a second. My buddy threw some salsa that we were munching on at it, and instantly we all freaked out. Sounds so goofy, but it teleported instantly. It didn't make a sound and a flash of second moved, the eyes glow in the dark. We all saw that thing and there was no explanation. I have even looked up to see if there is any animals that it could be, and possibly a bird or squirrel and there is nothing. But, my buddy looked it up recently after telling him this story and found that there is a myth about a creature with yellow eyes out near that area. I live near Lake Ontario in New York. On one unseasonably warm day in March when I was a young teenager, my dad and I took his little sailboat out. Lining the shore of Lake Ontario there are lots and lots of fruit farms, particularly apples. The wind suddenly just completely stopped all of a sudden and then picked up very strongly from another direction. Suddenly, things began pelting the sail like a BB gun and dropping into the boat. Bees, thousands of bees that were blown out of the orchards lining the lake. The entire boat was covered in bees, you couldn't see the floor. They were crawling all over us. They were probably just as shocked as we were. I had so many bees on me I wanted to jump into the lake, but my dad yelled that it was still way too cold and I'd freeze. We climbed into the tiny cabin, literally just big enough for a toilet and you couldn't even stand up in there and tried to get as many bees off of us as we could. It was truly a terrifying moment. When I was 16, I decided to get a part-time job at a local store. My parents had left for a trip, so I was home alone for the first time. After finishing my shift at 10 PM, I walked to our apartment and I had a feeling of being watched for the entire walk. When I got in, things weren't any better. Still spooked, I turned my PC on and started gaming. In the middle of a game, I heard loud banging, like someone was trying to break my window. I ran to the window, but there was no one there. I closed the anti-burglary blinds, my door etc., finished the game and went to sleep. I woke up at 2 AM, I remember checking the time on my phone, and had the same unsettling feeling of being watched. I came over to the window, rolled the anti-burglary blinds just a couple centimeters up and peeked through them. And I swear, there was a guy out there, just standing in front of my window. I immediately closed it, and called my parents. We have security and cameras all over the place, but there was just nothing on the tape. Maybe it was just my brain malfunctioning, but it scared the hell out of me. I was camping in a remote area with my friends when we saw something incredibly creepy. We had just finished setting up our tents and starting a fire when we heard some rustling in the bushes nearby. At first, we thought it might be a small animal, but the sounds were too heavy and deliberate. As we watched, a tall, thin figure emerged from the trees. It was walking on two legs, but its gait was strange and lurching. It had long, spindly arms that reached almost to the ground, and its fingers looked like they could wrap all the way around a tree trunk. We were frozen in fear, watching as the figure slowly made its way towards us. As it got closer, we could see that it had a humanoid face, but its eyes were completely black, without any whites or pupils. It didn't make any noise, but we could feel a sense of dread emanating from it. Finally, it stopped about 20 feet away from us, just beyond the edge of the firelight. It stood there for what felt like an eternity, just watching us with those blank black eyes. Then, without warning, 
It turned and disappeared back into the woods. We were all shaken up and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. To this day, we have no idea what we saw, but we all agree that it was the creepiest thing any of us have ever experienced. I and my cousin moved to Minnesota back in the mid-90 and got an apartment together. He started dating a lady by the name of Sunshine and Sunshine was into tarot reading, chakras, palm reading, you name it. She was cool and I really liked her. One day, she asked me if I would like to make some extra money on the weekend doing maintenance and house sitting, and I accepted the offer. She offered $150 to do maintenance around her apartment building while my cousin and her go on some trips. I would have to take out the trash, sweep the lobby, vacuum, and do other miscellaneous things. Thing is, I would have to stay at her apartment to perform these tasks instead of popping in and leaving when I am done. She was quite trusting, because she didn't know me well enough to be left alone in her apartment. She had a two-bedroom apartment, and one of those rooms was dedicated to her craft and I never went in that room. It was something about that room that creeped me out. I was also unable to sleep with the lights off, because I felt as if someone or something was watching me, and if I turned off the lights, whatever was lurking in the dark would get me. Her apartment had a balcony, and that balcony faced the forest. One night, I stepped out on the balcony to smoke a cigarette and it was dark, and I mean pitch black. I swear, absolutely certain, that someone or something was watching me, but I couldn't see it. I could just feel it, I can't explain it. I never went out there to smoke again, day or night. It was good and easy money but I never went back and she even asked if I wanted to house sit and do maintenance again, but I had to decline, it was too creepy. My husband, son and I were looking for a new place to live in Southern Oregon. We had been on a long exploratory trip staying in interesting Airbnb while we tried to find a long-term rental. One evening, our plan BNB cancelled, and we were scrambling to find a place to stay that wasn't too pricey. We found a cabin that was pretty far up in the mountains, and booked it fast. As I began to look at it, it was a brand new listing, no reviews, okay. It was hard to find even using their written directions, and we lost cell service a ways back. Finally, we rolled into a ranch. There is some handwritten signage, pointing us to a small lodge to check in. I got out, already feeling really weird about the location and vibe. I walk into the lodge and there are three guys. And they look like televangelists, light khakis, blue button-ups, dress shoes, crew cuts, Bluetooth earpieces, nothing about them reads like people who own a ranch. One of them was sitting at a table eating soup, he was a little bit of an outlier in that he had a hippie vibe, and all of them were young, maybe late 20s or early 30s. The main guy came up to me and made pleasantries and explained the cabin situation and that everything was new to them, so thanks for my patience and such. I asked, oh, how did you come to be here? And hipped guy at the table says, man, it was just like magic or something. And in my mind, I was thinking, ah, I'm going to need more than that? So we get to the cabin, which is a huge A-frame. There is an axe right outside the front door. There is supposed to be Wi-Fi, but I can't get it to work and now I have zero reception. Inside the cabin is decorated with really frilly curtain, dried flowers, and is brimming with religious books that I know from experience are of the prey the gay away variety. My son almost immediately falls down the stairs and skins his knee of this horrendous carpet. At this point, I have such an overwhelming sense of dread about this place, and I'm not a woo-woo person, I don't get vibes, so the fact that I felt such a strong gut reaction was worth listening to, I thought. I was certain I'd never be able to sleep, and I just felt so strongly that we should go. So, I told my family to pack up and we were going to leave right then. We left and drive back into town, and thankfully found a place to stay that was more expensive, but didn't feel like the opening scene of a cult horror. I've had a handful of times in my life, but the first time was hands down the worst and most terrifying, because I had no clue what it was and also because it was the most messed up time. I had a nightmare that I was at an old-timey church picnic like 1800s based on the clothing everyone was wearing. Suddenly, a voice says, if you believe in God, you believe in the devil too, and everyone starts contorting and crawling like you see in exorcism movies. So then I wake up, and I'm frozen in the darkness, and on top of me is a demonic creature that leans down really slow until it's right in my face and starts screaming this horrific otherworldly scream. It just keeps going and I'm desperately trying to move or scream or something. Finally I'm able to twitch my pinky toe, and suddenly, I can move and it's almost like I woke up for a second time. Turned on the light and cried. Never told my parents until recently for a laugh, I didn't back then because my mom is Catholic and I thought I was possessed and didn't want to be exorcised. I was really poor and didn't have internet, 
so I couldn't find out what it was until years later.